Hi, Bo. This is Mac. Um, I was wondering if you could answer a question for me. Sure. Okay, I am the biggest fan of Why Not Earth. I started watching it right after season one started, and I have loved it ever since. And I've always, ever since I was little, collected comic books. I'm a huge comic book fan. I have just obscene amounts of DC, Marvel, a couple indie and more independent ones, but mostly the big ones that I'm working on branching out my collection. But Great. I love creative writing and comic books, and I consider myself to be an inspiring illustrator. And so I was wondering, if you have a comic book who is an aspiring comic book artist, it's one of my biggest strengths to be one one day. Um, what pieces of advice would you give them? Uh, first off, whether it's writer or artist or both, never stop doing either one. Every day, do a little bit. Even if it's 10 minutes, and I know that doesn't seem like much, but you can different. Write every day, and don't, just because you like comic books and let's say you like movies as well or TV shows, don't take everything experience-wise from those. Read other books, nonfiction, fiction, anything, because most of the exposure you're, you'll get from those will cause ideas for you to change into. It's like my love for the Old West. I thought, oh, this is great. Okay, how can I fit vampires, werewolves, and six guns into it? So that realistic idea gave me the spark I needed for the creativity part. And in school, to be honest with you, I took every creative writing class I possibly could. And again, there, some of them were kind of boring sometimes. But what I took from them was, how can I make this my own? Even though they want me to read uh, Shakespeare or this book on certain book on history, I always found a way on my own time to make that my own for it to make sense to me. And to be honest with you, I even did that as a, as a kid in church sometimes. They would tell us, you know, the Sunday school lesson or the sermon, and yeah, I mean, not that I was changing the Bible, which I wasn't, but I was adding <laughs> to other things with it, and as a little kid, when I was growing up, creativity sometimes was stifled, because I always told teachers, I want to be a comic book writer, comic book artist, and they would say, ah, there's no money in that, you probably ought to try being a newspaper or magazine writer. Well, now, there's not those restrictions, as I'm telling you. You can do anything right. you want, especially with technology. So there are no holds barred. Whatever you're interested in, there's ways of, of making that work and uh, becoming a full-grown adult and making money from it as well. All right, awesome, Bill. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a great day. All right. You ne too. Next person, state your name, where you're from, and your question for Bo. Hey, Bo. Hey. My name is Chrissy. I'm a teenager in Arkansas in the United States. Hey, Chrissy. And my question for you is, which character on the show has had the greatest impact on you personally? I would have to say um, it would be Wine on Earth just for the fact that when I created Wine on Earth in the comic books, and that was 1996, I always based her off my mother and my grandmother, probably two of the most independent and strong women I've ever known in my life. And getting, I'll never forget in the auditions for Fano, who plays Wine on Earth, held up the badge to the camera and said, I'm Wine on Earth, U.S. Marshal. Literally, not sounding like a cliche, chills went up my neck. So that probably is, is the character that, that has the biggest impact for me. Um, for characters that I did not create in the comic books, which would be her sister Waverly, the Cole Hot, and even Doc Holliday, I would say it has to be Sheriff Randy Netflix, because there's a character that's close to my age that doesn't look that much different from me, and he's the probably the oldest guy on the show, and it shows to me that, hey, Old guy can hang out with the young guys and still fight crime and monsters. Everything's good. So I would have to say Randy Nedley is, is my second. Thank you so much, Bill. Those are really good answers.
Well, thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have All a good day. All right. You stay out of trouble. <laughs> that, no such thing, Bo. No such thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bo. You're welcome. So far, this season or any season, what has been your favorite moment from the show? Um, well, I'll tell you this about season four. We're halfway, you know, in right now, and we've got a few more to go. Some of the biggest surprises that you that you can imagine in a four year period are about to happen. That I can say. As far as the four years we've been on the air so far, um, call me sentimental, but um, season one is still and probably only even if we go 10, 15 years. Season one will always be my favorite because it was a truly innocent time with the characters, with the storyline. You're getting to know everybody in the beginning, and uh, it's something I'll always be able to look back fondly on because the characters and the storylines have changed so much. So much has, has been layered, and uh, it's complicated now in a good way. So um, I, will, I would have to say season one will always be my favorite. Um, and personally, the humorous moments are always the ones that I seem to enjoy the most. Um, Doc Holliday, the first time he sat down in a modern day car, because you got to think he's 135 years old, had never seen a car until he came out of the well that he was banished in. And he's sitting in behind the seat of that car, and the windshield wipers are going back and forth, and he's looking at him like, what? What magic is this? <laughs> the radio comes on on a cell phone. A call comes in. <laughs> what devil is that? He, he continues to call social media the Twitter or the tweeter and the Facebook. So those kind of moments always mean a lot to me. So they're, they're fun. And uh, I think those have just begun to be explored. No, I definitely remember that. I, I just when you said it, I just started like laughing. I'm like, I remember that scene so perfectly <laughs> in my mind. I'm like, that that was great. Yeah, all the funny moments. Yeah. There's so many. I think there's way too many to count. Well, that's the point, Jillian. You bring up a good point. There are so many because, as, as everybody knows, I created one on Earth in the comic book that that has been published for over twenty some years. When sold the rights to television to do that. That's when the showrunner and writer, Emily Andrus, took over. And I like to put it this way, and I've said it so many times that it's the best way of saying it. I gave her a, a loaf of bread, and she took that loaf of bread and made sandwiches for the world. Because with her smart, witty, quick way of thinking, she created so much from, from the little bit of whole cloth that I gave her and added to it, she created the character Nicole Hot, Waverly. She brought in Doc Holliday with his backstory, and just about everything that you see on there. She took my Bobo Del Rey villain and layered him so heavily you think, you know, you're under six crazy quilts. So Emily Anders, the cast and the crew have done so much that it's it's hard to be having it. They've been very gracious with... Um, what they've let me be a part of with the show. Uh, because basically, contracts and wise, well, they have to do send me a check. They've done what I've been a, a part of it since the beginning. And they have been, they have been more than gracious uh, to let uh, a weirdo like me that talks like me into a party like that. And I keep waiting for the day I'm going to get tossed out. Someone's going to go, hey, who let this stump jumper in here? But that has not happened yet. So. Hey, Bo, they should be sending me a check too. <laughs> Oh, and by the end of it, they probably will. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if I get like a, a check from Sci-Fi, if if I if I get a check from Sci-Fi, I'll be sure to thank you. Oh, you'll be sure to share it with me. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I got to ask you guys right now. My camera, I think, went out. I don't know if you can see. It's all right, and I know what a what a sad thing is that is there anything particular I should get I don't I hate to be unprofessional but should I touch something to make it come back no you're fine it, it's okay it's okay. we could st- we could still hear you we still see you and you know uh, I love that beautiful beard I don't know what lives in it but I love that beautiful beard <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah, you don't want to. You don't trust me. You don't want to know what lives in here. So, so I, uh, I like to have fun. Okay, I, I, I do. I like to have fun. So. Uh, what I like to do, yeah. Bo, is I like to play some music. And, and obviously, you might not be the dancing type, but you might be the singing type. And I picked a track that you probably know. It was very popular in the late 70s, and, and it's still very, very popular. And I, I would love for you to sing it with us, okay? <laughs> hey, your, your punishment. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh-huh. Sure. All right. Here we go, Speedy. Here we go. Play it. Speedy, are, are, do we have a problem over here? Uh, we have a problem. <laughs> Play it over, Speedy, because our producer, by the way, he is, he's been doing this for three years. Do you hear the music, Bo? Do you hear it? All right. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Bo, do you hear the music? I'm um, no. You didn't hear the music. That stinks, man. I'm trying. No. I, I'm trying because I'm it, sorry. It's okay. It's it, it's okay. We're we're trying to get you to hear the music, but he probably can't hear it on the board. But that's all right. Well, so we can't sing it with him. Uh, do you know Sweet Caroline? By Neil Diamond. That's right. So I, I will. You will follow me. Sweet Caroline. All right, so we're going to play the music, and, and you're going to... F- <laughs> yeah, I've got it. Yeah. All right, so you're not going to be hear, be able to hear the music, but you're going to be able to sing it with me, and you just follow along. You know the words, okay? okay? Here we go, Speedy. Play it from the oh, beginning. Okay. <laughs> Where it began, I can't, I can't begin, begin to knowing, knowing, but then I know it's growing but then strong. I know it's growing strong. <laughs> what in, in the spring? Hello. Listen. And spring became the summer. And spring became the summer. Who have believed you believe come along? Hands touching hands reaching out, out. Touching, touching me touching you oh, come on Bo Sweet Caroline Sweet Caroline but the times I'm never felt so good So good so good so good I'm and alive nah, 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 <laughs> To believe that never would But no, no. All right, all right All right, all right We tried, Bob We tried, we tried I, I mean, right. we're not singing first, That was a, Hey, that was a first for me I, I appreciate taking me out of my comfort zone into a world that's scared to pee out of. <laughs> well, if you hung out with me, Thanks. I'd scare the hell out of you. That's for sure. 